service and today we are coming to you from the beautiful St. Paul's Church here in Cardinal. And first I'd like to thank our singers today, Joan and Philip and Alan, for coming and helping Father David and lead the music ministry this morning. I'd like to begin with an opening collect prayer. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. O oh God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, today, our reading will come to you from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, and you may have noticed that we've been working a little bit on a series of sermons from Acts and from Luke's, that Luke this Easter time. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 13, beginning at verse 26. Paul said, Brothers, children of Abraham, and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. Yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. And continuing, for my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Well, I want to begin with a little question for you today. How many arguments have ended up like this? Ha! Huh, I was right. Well, usually it's younger people that we hear that from, but not always. We all want to be right, I think. And sometimes that desire to be right takes hold of us even when everything else is wrong. 
We heard the story about Mikey, a young guy who had a crush on a girl in school, and they were at a school dance. Mikey wanted desperately to spend time with her, but he didn't really know how to dance. The girl he admired insisted she wanted to dance, and he said, I don't really know how. And she said, oh, don't be silly, it's easy. Well, he wanted to make a hit with the girl, so he started dancing with her, but he tripped. And not only did he fall, but uh, very sadly, he pulled her down with him, and all the other students were laughing. She was humiliated. With all of his dreams crashing down around him, Mikey said, I told you, I didn't know how to dance. I was right. Well, the desire to be right doesn't bring peace and happiness. And we wanted to think a little bit about that today. We can brag about being right. We can delight in others being wrong. Some of the bitterest conflicts are over who was right. But there is surely a core of the desire to be right that is right. In many of the Psalms, the psalmist is doing the right thing, but is often misrepresented and slandered, made to appear in the wrong. And he cries out to God to be vindicated. Show that I am right, Lord. I remember Job. He was overwhelmed by tragedy and loss, and his friends gently suggested he's being punished for something he did. But in his misery, he desperately holds to his conviction that he hasn't done anything wrong, and it turned out Job was right. So the Bible teaches us this desire to be right is, deep down, it's a good desire. It's a necessary part of being human, however, it can go very wrong. And as he went to the cross, our Lord Jesus looked very much like someone in the wrong. His teaching, his claims for God and for himself looked foolish. His whole mission looked like a failure. Our Lord was mocked, treated with contempt, and worst of all, he was identified with all human sin and wrong. And faith tells us that this was all a part of God's plan. But this could not be God's plan if Jesus was left there on the cross. It could not be part of God's plan if God did not establish that Jesus truly was in the right. And that's a big part of what it means that God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus rising from the dead announced to all, he was right. He is right. And there is more. Just as the Bible says that Jesus died for our sins, it says he rose for our justification. St. Paul, preaching to the synagogue at Antioch, draws out the meaning of the resurrection. Therefore, I want you to know, he said, that through Jesus, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified. This to me is tremendous when I think about it. Everyone who believes is justified. What St. Paul is saying that first God declared that Jesus was in the right by raising him from the dead, but more than this, God was also through him declaring us to be in the right through faith. To be justified means to be declared in the right with God. Well, there is so much that we could say about this, but let me just say that our desire to be right, our desire to be right with God, has been fulfilled by Jesus. What a glorious thought, for the day will come when we will meet our Creator. And Jesus has put us right with God in a way that does not leave any of us any room for bragging because we did not do this, nor can we feel superior to anyone. It's not that we're perfect or that we don't have a long way to go. Through him, everyone who believes is justified. So saying, ha, huh, I was right, often does bring division, we know, and bitterness. But being right with God, through keeping our faith, 
living our faith in Jesus, that is a whole other thing. That brings happiness and peace unlike anything else in our world. That's part of the meaning of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. God declared him to be in the right when he raised him from the dead. Through him, we can be in the right with God as well. And for that, this day, we give thanks to God. For our intercessions through these days of the pandemic, we've been offering up a lot of heartfelt concerns. And last week, we were in special prayers for Nova Scotia. And this week, I do feel that we have things to be thankful for, and we do want to offer some prayers of thankfulness. And so for today, I'd like to offer a litany with thanksgiving at its very heart. And I would invite you to respond in the prayers today. We thank you, Lord. Let us pray together. Let us give thanks to God our Father always, and for every mercy saying, we thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of creation, we, we thank you, Lord. Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, especially the heroic efforts, the sacrifice, the progress that has been made in this pandemic, for all that reveals the image of Christ, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord for our daily food, for our homes, and families, and friends. We, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For minds to think, and especially blessings upon the research workers who still are researching a cure and vaccine for COVID-19, and for hearts to love, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For health, and we continue to pray a blessing on the health of all in our parish, our friends, families, loved ones, for strength, for skill to work, for leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For all those who are brave and courageous, especially those who've been working on the front lines, and for all those who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For all who pursue peace and justice, and we think also of all the workers in the military and the police forces in our country and around the world. And for those who pursue truth, yeah, we thank you, Lord. Lord. Today, we give you thanks especially for our blessings and for the news that on Monday, some businesses will carefully open up in our country we ask, Lord, for your protection and guidance in going forward. We thank you, Lord. For St. Paul, St. John, St. James, for all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ, we thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of this world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen.